Welcome and thank you for watching this second episode of our Top Trends in Manufacturing video series. These videos are a series of discussions with industry experts that aim to shed light on current trends and technology shaping the manufacturing industry. My name is Jeff Winter and I am a manufacturing industry executive. Today, we are excited to speak with Laura Cesare, the founder of Supply Chain Insights. And if you don't know Laura, she is one of the top industry thought leaders on supply chain. She's a speaker, a blog writer, a book author, an overall industry expert with over 35 years of experience working in the supply chain industry. And as a business strategist, Laura focuses on the changing face of enterprise technologies. And today we're going to talk about the magic of AI in supply chain, hype versus reality. So with that, let's welcome Laura. Thank you so much. I guess that means I'm an old gal. I've been around for a long time, but it's great to be here. So Laura, I can start off by kind of imagine supply chain the past few years being one of the most interesting, challenging, frustrating, and exciting times. And the whole world has had to figure out how to navigate shortages and demand uncertainty and logistic constraints, remote work, inflation, and just an onslaught of new technologies. Now that we're over the hump and stabilizing, knock on wood, what is the biggest thing that you've learned from all this? Well, I think we're in a redefinition period where people say, oh my gosh, I've got processes that are inside out, meaning I'm very functional, and I really need to be outside in to use market signals, market signals from the channel about changing a demand to reduce demand latency, market signals from suppliers to look at issues around pattern recognition with supply irregularities, messages from logistics, because we've never had logistics like we had as a constraint during the period of March 20 through the current period. And now we're experiencing a push on ocean shipping where people are basically giving a booking, but that booking is delayed two to three months and people don't have good visibility for that delay. So we've seen a lot of advancements in the past few years in technology, especially related to supply chain and artificial intelligence, in my opinion, is one of the most prominent and promising but how real is it and how are real impacts being made in supply chain using artificial intelligence? So artificial intelligence, uh, cognitive computing, the evolution of the graph and the ability to look at deeper insights and to sense and respond and drive proactive response is starting to be a great asset in pattern recognition either pattern recognition of channel data or pattern recognition of supplier data to be able to look at how do I redefine supply planning master data or how do I reduce demand latency? I'm seeing less value today, but doesn't mean that the promise isn't there around improving optimization. And the issue with the work on improving optimization really lies in the fact that it's hard to make an optimizer better when the model is wrong. So if I come and I try to add AI and make the current optimizers one step better, if they're asking the wrong questions and the model is defined incorrectly because it's inside out, I get limited value. So lots of success around pattern recognition, mapping, sensing, less, value today, but doesn't mean in the future, around optimization. I like your way of describing it and looking at it. And I kind of think like knowing AI and other technologies often require a lot of specialized expertise to fully utilize. How do you recommend people get started and where should they start? Well, I recognize that most people are very confused. So I start with definitions. What is the problem statement? Where do you need to basically drive more insight? What data do you have that you're not using, which could be a value? And then how do I really use data that's different and get value to answer the questions and the issues of the day? So I do a lot of work with companies where we just map the last year and we say, where did you have issues? What data do you have? 
what could you have put machine learning or artificial intelligence or building a cognitive computing ontology and use the data you have to drive early proactive signals? And then how does that change your current processes? You know, one of the things is we're drowning in data and the data is growing exponentially, but traditional architectures do not allow us to use that data because we're so stuck into thinking about rows and columns and sticking transactions into rows and columns versus embracing unstructured data and streaming data and image data. And that requires a real paradigm mindset and unlearning some of the current processes. You even mentioned the word data. And that kind of begs the question, how important is a unified data model for supply chain? And what does the future look like for having one? A unified data model is extremely important. And thank you for asking me the question. So only 9% of companies actively design their supply chains, which I'm a chemical engineer. I couldn't get out of school without designing heat exchangers and distillation columns. And so I'm shocked that people don't actively design their supply chains, form and function of inventory, where do I want postponement strategies, push-pull decoupling points, I could go on and on. But stuck between the design layer and the traditional planning layer needs to be a unified data model. And that unified data model translates the design into the optimization engines and also allows you to look at supply chain planning master data that is happening on lead time and conversion rates to keep those optimizers in sync. Now, why that is important, the average company has at least 12 planning systems and those planning systems are not synchronized. And additionally, the optimization engine models are not aligned. So for example, promotion management and price management and consumer products has nothing to do at a data model level with traditional demand planning or CRM to demand planning. It's impossible to integrate that, but a unified data model with the synchronization and a rules-based ontology with some insights for our official intelligence allows us that demand translation and synchronization. In addition, DRP or distribution requirements planning, that data model has nothing in common with transportation management, but a unified data model allows us to go across the planning apps and allows us to translate the supply chain design into the planning requirements and artificial intelligence on top of supply chain planning master data allows us to synchronize those engines based upon the transactional data. So those that know me, know me as the industry 4.0 guy, a subject I love talking about. And even though there's no universally accepted definition of industry 4.0, the overwhelming emphasis is on production and manufacturing, not necessarily supply chain or the entire value chain. Why do you think that is? And how should companies include supply chain in their industry 4.0 strategy? It's a great question. So we've got to start with saying, how do I define supply chain excellence? What drives value at a balance sheet level? And oh, by the way, that's not functional metrics. That's not OEE or lowest manufacturing cost or lowest transportation cost. It's looking at growth and margin and inventory turns and asset utilization. And how do I map what's needed at the balance sheet decided by strategy to the flows to be able to drive the best results. So that's number one. The second thing is what signals are available that I've never used before, whether it's transportation, you know, Internet of Things, GPS data, map data, weather data, and how can I use this data to better solve the problems I'm having against that balance sheet information to minimize exceptions and improve reliability. Because 80% of the data surrounding the supply chain is not used. It's shocking. But we've set up the supply chain on the false premise that enterprise resource planning or ERP data is really what's needed to be able to drive the supply chain. And that drives the supply chain off the cliff, right? We need to be able to use industry data. We need to be able to use available information around pattern recognition. We need to be able to drive forward-looking insights. And those technologies 
are evolving and I'm excited Microsoft is coming to the table to be more of a player in supply chain. Well, thank you, Laura, for sharing your perspective and insight with us today. And if you're interested in hearing more about top trends in manufacturing, watch the rest of our series and hear other industry experts discussing the latest trends they're seeing in the intersection of technology and manufacturing. Stay tuned for our next episode and hope to see you again soon. Thanks, Jeff.